Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest, everyone kind of knows today's guest, but we don't necessarily know the whole backstory. And I'm really excited to uh, talk with him. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss. I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landphoto.com, and most importantly, not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook posting, hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a, it's a great day for me, though. It, it's, it's fantastic because you're kind of outnumbered here. I, I am, and uh, I'm a little, little nervous about it. You should um, be. The reason I am outnumbered is today's guest is a coaching client, coaching student, and now a coach. Eric Peterson from landopia.com. And you've heard Eric on the roundtables, but I don't, we've never had a podcast with Eric where he kind of talks to us and we rewind the tape and we hear his whole, his whole story. And, um, and a lot of people don't know the whole genesis of the whole Team Scott, Team Mark uh, story as well. So Eric Peterson, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here, Mark. So, Eric, let's, let's rewind the tape um, and take us back to your land investing journey. How did you find us and what made you want to go forward with the toolkit, um, start doing deals, and then um, eventually get into coaching? All right. So, I think it started back in 2015. Uh, I went to, well, first I bought the toolkit. Um, and later I went to the Orlando boot camp. Um, but that was, that was really all I did. Um, you know, in terms of the land geek, right. Um, I, I took the information that I learned and I started to implement it on my own, um, kind of slowly at first testing the waters. Um, I went outside the, uh, the recommended plan and I, I bought property in Tennessee and um, I bought two properties in Tennessee to start. And my logic behind that was really, you know, um, I want it to be close to home in case I got to go check it out or go take photos or whatever it is. I just, you know, thought it'd be great if I could get there easily. So I bought those two properties um, and I later sold one, uh, actually, I think it was my first sale. It was probably two months later, uh, after marketing it on Craigslist. And, um, at that time it was pretty much just Craigslist that I was using. Um, but I, I kind of quickly learned from the response of my mailing and just kind of the, the interest that I generated from the advertising I was doing that I, I maybe wasn't in the best area to be working. Um, you know, I, I knew that the toolkit and, and boot camp all talked about the secret county list and, uh, you know, working out West and all this stuff. But, um, I guess for me, I just, I felt like I had to prove the system and t in order for me to do that, I wanted to do it near home. Um, but I quickly kind of jumped on the bandwagon and, and went out West. And, uh, when I did that, uh, not only did I get better response in my mailings, but I was making sales quicker. So um, that's, I guess, a little bit about my start with with the Land Geek. So can you describe the conversation you had with your wife when you're like, "Hey, I found this guy. He's kind of geeky. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna invest in this in this toolkit and start doing land deals." Yeah. So I guess backing up even even further, um, you know, I I went to school, uh, college, and got a degree in visual communication. So I have a graphic design background. I've been doing that for many years, um, but doing it from home uh, for quite some time actually. And um, I was always looking for, um, I guess, something else to, to bring in some extra income, some kind of internet business or something with real estate, but, but never really um, had something that was a good fit. Um, until, you know, I, I started listening to a lot of Bigger Pockets podcasts and came across Seth Williams, came across you. And, um, you know, 
it was interesting. I, I was kind of leaning towards doing some house flipping at the time. Um, but I was concerned about the capital involved in doing that. So um, I kind of took the leap and I bought that toolkit. Um, I don't think I told my wife to start with. Um, and uh, and I, I went ahead and, you know, took some action and, and did those deals we talked about. Um, and then I think it was probably um, sometime during that process, obviously I, I told my wife about it. I don't remember exactly when, but I know when, when I had that first sale, I actually met someone here in town at a, at a Starbucks to do that sale. And <laughs> I just remember her being like, what, what are you doing? You know, and I come home and this was like a really unique sale. Um, the guy wanted to give me precious metals for the down payment and part of the payment and all this stuff. So it was, it was very weird. And she was just like this, I don't know, you know, but I'm like, look at all this money I just made. You know, I turned a couple thousand dollars into 10,000, you know? So, um, it took her a little while to get used to it, but, uh, but no, I, she, she definitely understands it now and, and loves what I'm doing. So. I, I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, why, why are you smiling so big? Man, I, I mean, what, one, because the story, there's so many things in Eric's story that I think a lot of people do, right? Like, I mean, because I know I was there too. Like, you know, he said that he wanted to start locally, right? Like, and I wanted to start locally and I was mailing to him like my local county. And then I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. You know, like the response rate was low and it's a popular county that I was living at the time. And people still, they want to flock there, but it's crazy because you get like, you get, you, you spend a lot of money for my local market. You spend a lot of money to get a little versus going out West where you spend a little bit of money and you get a lot of land, right? Like, and people love yeah. big numbers. And I mean, I was thinking the same way that Eric was like, oh man, in case I need to be there. Well, what do I need to be there for the land for? Right? Like there's nothing there. The dirt, it's dirt, right? Like it's okay. It will always be okay. Um, and then I really think I was kind of laughing because, you know, here's, here's Eric. I can see him at the Starbucks. Like he didn't tell his wife, like, uh, honey, I got to go meet this guy. I'll tell you later. It, it has like, it has the beginnings of a whole breaking bad there, Mark, you know, like, you know, <laughs> here's Eric. He's doing some shady stuff. He's got, which is clean by the way, but then he's got to come back and explain to his wife, like I got these precious metals and uh, let me let, okay, honey, sit down and let me explain to you what I'm doing. And even my, like my wife, when I started, she was just like, this, this sounds crazy. You know, I'm like, I know it sounds crazy. Just roll with me here. So there's so, Eric's story is great. I, I love it. I mean, Eric, what, what advice would you give somebody that's just starting out and, and, and wants to sort of emulate what you've done and your success and, and kind of talk a little bit about your success as well? So in terms of advice, I think probably one of the biggest things is just um, to take action, right? To, to get started, to get your list, to start mailing. And, um, you know, even, even though you don't know necessarily the end game, uh, you just learn it along the way. And that's, that's definitely what I did. You know, it was like, okay, I got a mail. Well, let's try that. Let's see what happens. And then, you know, offers start coming back and it's like, okay, um, I got to figure out how to do due diligence and, and so on down the line. Um, so, so it's just, it's just kind of jumping in, but then beyond that, I think, it really comes down to being committed to the business or committed to uh, changing your circumstances. Um, so, you know, a little bit every day is, is key to the business. You know, if you, if you don't put in the time, you're not going to get there. Um, you know, it does, it does take that level of commitment. Um, and for me, when I started off, I didn't fully have that commitment. You know, I was kind of testing the system and, and just, wasn't really sure about it, but it wasn't too long later that I, I did make that commitment. And I said, you know, I'm going to really put my focus on this for, for the next year and see what I can do. And, uh, in doing that, that led me to that first year on my own after buying the toolkit and going to boot camp. I, I, uh, bought a ton of property and, and I actually, uh, profited about a hundred thousand in that first year. And it was then that I knew. And, and how many um, hours a week were you working? Um, pretty much just nights. So, you know, maybe 
couple hours every night, I would put some time into it. Um, and that, I think it started to build too. The more success I saw, the more willing I was to invest time in it. But uh, yeah, I mean, probably 10 hours a week or something. And then how did, how, what happened after you got into coaching? And why even go into coaching if you're doing well? So at the end of that year, when I uh, had 100,000 in profit, um, or it was around that time that, that I kind of decided that that I really wanted to move into this full time and, and make, you know, it my job, you know, to, to kind of set the, the graphic design behind and just really, um, focus on this. I, I enjoy it a lot. And, um, you know, I just, I wanted to invest in it fully. So at that point, um, I, I talked to you, Mark, I said, you know, I, I'm ready to do some coaching, you know, what does this mean? And, um, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. And, um, for me at that point, it just made sense to really, um, kind of take my business to the next level. Um, and, uh, coaching did exactly that. In that first three months, I, I was able to profit about the same I did in the previous 12 months. So, um, you know, I had some great growth and continue to see growth. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really been great. Scott Todd, what, what do you think is, is the difference between doing it on your own and then kind of getting into our geeky tools um, as far as growth? Is it systems? Is it automation? Is it accountability? Is it a combination of it? Like, I, I think like, it's a combination. How, how can you account for that? Yeah, I think, I think it's a common, uh, it's, it's, it's combining all those things into one, right? Like the fact that, um, first, the fact that you have somebody that you can run things by, you know, like when Eric got into coaching, Eric, Eric was already doing the business. So he didn't necessarily have to focus on learning the basics, right? Like the, the basics, he, he kind of had that. So Eric was able to take and, you know, like really structure his, his uh, coaching calls to more advanced topics that would help him scale his business, right? So that, that's one component of it. So he was already, he already came into it at a higher level. I think that, you know, if you're starting out, that's why we offer, you know, flight school to, to kind of give you that, that one piece. But I think it's the accountability of it. And then it's the geeky tools. You know, the fact that you can now start to automate your business if you haven't already. I think that that's enormous. I know that there's no way, Mark, like, I mean, I was doing this business the same as you. We were, we were doing it basically at the same time with no automation. And there's no way that we could scale it the way that we did. And, you know, when you look at the jump from one year to the next, like, I don't know your exact numbers for 2015, but I know I went from, you know, 60 something deals and, you know, 68 deals in, in 2015 to 198 in 2016. The only thing that changed was the automation of it, the ability to scale. And I think that that's, you know, the, the component that that's kind of like the, the hidden, hidden component that a lot of people don't see. Yeah. I mean, there's no way I, I would have been able to do 192 deals without the, the automation. And, um, you know, we talk about this a lot, like what used to take me 20 minutes in paperwork now takes two seconds and, uh, it's crazy. So, so Eric, I mean, you know, we're talking about the good stuff in land. What sucks for you in the land business? Like, is there anything that kind of makes you go, Oh gosh, if I have to do this again, I'm going to kill myself. Um, not really. I mean, I feel like, so we all run into those things that, that we don't enjoy doing, right? Whether that's due diligence or preparing deeds or um, sending out offers or whatever it is, scrubbing a list. Um, but, you know, the, the system teaches how to find virtual assistants to do that work for you. So, you know, um, there's there's not any like, big kind of tough things for me. If, if it is, I'm going to find a VA to work on it for me. Scott, it's so funny he says that because I think a lot of people want to struggle and suffer and, and do it themselves and, or they want to save the money maybe. Um, I, I, th I think that as long as you're doing the mailing and marketing and you understand the business, why should you have to scrub a list? Right. Yeah, exactly. But you, you know, what's funny, Mark, is as we're saying that, like, um, 
we, we have a flight school going on and we just launched it last week. And uh, this morning I asked people like in flight school, hey, are you mailing yes, no, or I'm stuck. And uh, someone went on there honestly and said, hey, you know, I gave it to a VA and uh, thinking that was the best way to do it. And then they haven't gotten back to me. In fact, it took them 24 hours in order just to ask me one question. And then they realized right then and there, like, okay, well, man, that's kind of crazy. I've got a mail. And I think that when you're starting off the business, any business, you got to roll up your sleeves and do the hard work, right? Like you just can't go and take it to a VA from day one. I mean, I guess you could, but you don't even know what you're doing. So like, how do you know that the, the core is there, right? I think you have to go through the cycle. You have to go through it. You have to embrace the suck. And then when you do, then you can go back and you can help and start to bring on VAs to help you. But I think a lot of people, they just want to be like, oh, I'm just going to get to a VA from day one. And I really think that that's really the wrong approach because you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think that um, you've got to go full cycle on your own. Otherwise, you don't have that depth of knowledge when a VA does have a question for you um, to, to really give them the, 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 the tools and the answers that they need. And also, I, I think that... Um, you know, there, I don't know. I mean, there are parts that, you know, maybe you could outsource right away as long as you have some depth and knowledge of it. But for the most part, you know, the, the deal flow aspects, pricing, due diligence, the marketing, the closing, you should do that all on your own first before you start delegating that out. So Eric, for you, I have a theory, right? I, my theory is that most people either love deal flow or they love the marketing and the selling. They kind of lean towards one or the other. Now with your graphic design background, it's kind of creative, but you also have sort of a, an analytical side to you as well. And, um, and you like technology. I mean, for you, which, which do you sort of lean towards as, as enjoying more or, or do you enjoy both equally? Um, I think it probably skews more towards the marketing for me. However, I think there's aspects of both that I like. Um, you know, I, there's nothing like getting offers back and, you know, seeing you can buy a piece of land of five acres or whatever it is for 500 bucks, 800 bucks or whatever. I mean, and, and just knowing right off the bat that you can turn around and sell that for a big profit. I mean, that's, enjoyable and, and will be enjoyable for, for the foreseeable future. You know, I mean, I think we all love that. Um, but the, the, um, marketing side, um, definitely just the graphics piece of that and dealing with images and websites and, um, kind of branding type aspects of that. Right. Um, because you know, it is my background. Um, there's, there are pieces in both areas that I don't like too. Um, and you know, for me, that's due diligence. I don't really enjoy that that much. Um, it's kind of tedious work for me. Um, and the actual getting of the ads out every day, I definitely don't enjoy that. I don't feel like I'm the best writer. So, um, you know, those are some of the things that I built systems for and, and hired VAs to work on for me you know, early on. So I can get those off my plate and focus on the things I enjoy. I love it. I love it. What would you say has been the, the best deal you've, you've done so far? Um, well, I, I don't know about best deal, but you know, memorable certainly is that first one. Um, it was, like I said, I met the guy at Starbucks. He showed up with uh, silver coins and gold coins and said, you know, do you take this as a down payment? Then we, he wanted to close through a title company and he brought more silver to, you know, pay even more of the price for the property. And then the rest was cash. So, I mean, that one, it was just, it was probably the most unique. Um, and being the first one, of course, is, is one of the most memorable. Um, but, you know, I mean, I've done some, some deals where, yeah, I've had an option on a property and, and sold it while I had it on option. So um, in the case of that property, I think I got like 5,000 down on it and I had to pay uh, maybe another 3,000 for it. But um, 
you know, have my money out in less than a year. Um, so, you know, I mean, that kind of deal feels great. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know that there's, there's any one beyond that, that first one that, that really stands out. Um, you know, I've bought property from, from, uh, some great individuals. So, uh, that can be fun as well, especially when you find those deals where, you know, someone has multiple properties and they like working with you and they want to sell you more. So, um, those are also memorable yeah. as you're shaking your head. Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> talked about on the round table, Eric found one of my sellers from years ago and I went out and met this guy and somehow he's doing business now with Eric and I still feel horrible that I didn't keep up with the guy because he's got so much property, but um, a learning lesson for me. So speaking of learning lessons, if you could go back in time now, knowing what you know, is there anything you would have done differently out of the gate that we could all learn from? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I would have started out West. Um, I would have um, found a way to automate my mailings um, earlier in the process. Um, you know, I think nowadays uh, with uh, the people coming through flight school and using LG Pass and things like that, it's a little easier for, for people to be able to do that. But um, back when I started doing this, you know, I was printing offer letters at home, uh, folding them up at night. And we even, for a while, we were handwriting the, the envelopes. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that would be something knowing what I know now, I would do differently uh, just because it could be more efficient. What about the back end of it? As far as like collecting the money and automating that piece? Yeah. So that piece um, early on, um, I think my first terms deal, I, I used uh, the system the community was using at the time. Um, which was rather expensive, especially with just one note in the system at the time. Um, you know, it was kind of like I was losing money to do it, but um, it made sense from, you know, kind of looking into the future, knowing I was going to have more notes coming. Um, so I did that. But uh, moving on to uh, today, you know, now we have Geek Pay and that uh, solves so many problems and, and makes things so much easier for, for me and my business. And I'm sure for many others, um, just the ability to, to automate the collection of those notes, being able to, uh, take ACH and credit card payments through that system, collect down payments. Um, yeah, I mean, without geek pay, uh, you know, this business would be a lot tougher. So. All right. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what are your, any, any thoughts? You know, it's funny cause you're, you're talking, asking him about his, his favorite deal or best deal or most memorable deal. And, uh, I think, I think that when you've done this for a while, like with anything, you, you get those deals. They're just like, man, I cannot believe that I just did that. And you know, it's my, my, my favorite deal or most memorable deal is I, I didn't know like, uh, you know, sometimes you, you mail and you just don't know, like you don't know what you don't know. And so I started making offers in this one area where um, I, I started making offers for, for $700, $750. And uh, people started accepting them. And I'm like, wow, okay. So that became the price. And little, little did I know that um, it was in this very highly desirable area. And, uh, I basically found a pocket of people that didn't know what the property was valued at. And I probably bought about five of these things and, uh, then turned around and sold them for, um, about 10,000 a piece. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, this business is so crazy because, you know, it's really, it really is an agreement between what two people want to buy the property for. And, uh, after that, man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So we, you know, before we get to the tip of the week, we got to tell everybody the story of team Scott, team Mark yeah. and how that came about. So Eric, uh, was it after a boot camp in Orlando? You sent me a gift. Yeah. Yeah. It was after the, the second boot camp in Orlando that I was at. Okay. So 
Um, you come to boot camp. What did you think of boot camp, by the way? You're... Um, so that was my second boot camp, but uh, you know, nonetheless, I mean, every time I go, it is it is always so beneficial. Um, whether it's making connections with others in the community, or you know, just pulling those bits of information out that um, you know you might learn from a presentation, or maybe just talking to someone else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, boot camp is is definitely worthwhile. Um, I know it can be expensive, um, but it, it's worth it. So, okay, so you go to your second boot camp, and I got in the mail a gift card. Like, you know, I, I was juicing at the time. I don't juice as much as I used to, but I got a great juice gift card and a really nice note um, expressing your gratitude for, um, you know, us, you know, helping you. And it was really nice. It was really nice. And then little did I know you sent Scott a gift. What did you send Scott? So Scott got a t-shirt and uh, at the time you guys had a competition going and uh, what was it, like 700 deals for the year or something? That was kind of the goal, the yeah, 10X yeah. goal. I, I, I kind of freaked Mark out because I, I remember I was sitting there and I was telling him like, Mark, I've determined my goal for next year. He's like, okay, what is it? I'm like, I'm going to do 700 deals. And Mark was like, well, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's on now, huh? He's like, yeah, it's on. It's on. Let's do it. I'm like, okay, all right. And that's when we started the, uh, the, the, the Team Scott, Team Mark competition. Who's going to right. get the 700 and, first? And that kind of was brought into light at boot camp, And um, so, you know, it just, just kind of seemed obvious to me to, to make a t-shirt about it. And, you know, I, I don't know that I was picking sides necessarily at that time, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it just, that's, that's what I had in mind to, to give to Scott. And, you know, I think at the time, you know, Mark, I just, felt like it, a nice little gift for you was the gift card. And, you know, <laughs> I'll never you get the juicing. <laughs> you get the juicer and I get the uh, team Scott shirt. Yeah. But I, th I think that, um, you know, and I, I say this to Scott a lot. I mean, I, I really feel like um, we're all team Scott in a way, because, you know, if you don't know his story, go back and, and kind of listen to the podcast, but you know, Scott's the personification of what you can do in this business with focus and grit and determination. And he did beat me. Like it took me 18 months to replace my investment banking income and quit my job and do this full time. It took him 17 months and three days. And I almost feel like in a way, because I've been doing this for so long, um, I'm team Scott. Right. I mean, I know I haze you a lot about it and it's fun to do, but you know, in my heart, like, I think we're all team Scott. I think we all want to be that guy. And, you know, it wasn't too long ago that, that Scott was at his first boot camp, And so I think it's more relatable. And, you know, what, what I think is going to be interesting is the evolution of the coaching program where it's not just going to be team Scott, it's going to be team Eric. It's going to be team Mike. It's going to be, you know, team Tate and, you know, and the, the Archibald's already got me a team Tate uh, coffee mug. So I think for me, as much as I, you know, I haze you about it. Uh, it it's really uh, something that I feel very proud of that, you know, you would express that gratitude and, and, um, and choose that side. I mean, if I were you, I would have chosen, team Scott as well. And ultimately I think the t-shirt is what allowed him to do six more deals in me last year. That was the well. extra motivation. It was the extra motivation that, that, that Scott needed. So I, um, I do think you're right. It's not, it's not team Scott. It's, it, it, it could be, you know, re reframed hashtag team, you know, freedom or team me or whatever, whatever that's really about the fact that you can in fact create a lifestyle that you want um, you just really have to have the passion to go do it. And Mark, you know, like I, I'll tell you, like I, it's crazy because, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I've got time that I can go do the stuff that I want to do in life and create the life that I want, not necessarily tied to a, a job. And 
in fact, my wife and I this morning we went to we went to lunch. We went to Panera Bread first time in a long time. Oh no! You know, we did go to Panera Bread because we I had to get back here for this. But uh, as we were walking in, you know, I'm like pulling in the garbage can, and I forgot what we were talking about. And I said, I said, honey, remember those old days when I like had to go to like a job? Like, how miserable was that? You know, like I can't even fathom like that that I've. I've now almost done this for like, I don't know, a year and a half. And it's like, man, this is life. You know, like it's not just about this, you know, this piece. Land is just a component to give you the the benefits of what you want. It's not like you got to love land, you know, just, you just have to like the benefits from it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, all right, Eric, I mean, I know you, you love doing this part. What is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. I think your mentorship today has been invaluable. And I, these are always my favorite podcasts is when we have uh, past clients come on and talk about their journey, because I think it makes it so much more real for the listener um, that, okay, if Eric can do it, I can do it. If Scott can do it, I can do it. And I'm, I almost feel like I've been doing it so long. I'm almost not relatable anymore uh, because it, you know, it's 2001. I quit my job. Um, so Eric, what is your tip of the week? All right. Um, have we done later as a tip of the week yet? No. What's later? Later. It's just later.com is a, basically a, a scheduler for Instagram. Um, I recently started an Instagram account for my company. Um, just kind of experimenting around with it a little bit. Um, you know, it is obviously a pretty major, uh, social media platform. So, um, I kind of came across this, um, as a option to be able to schedule posts and things of that nature. Um, I know there's, there's a million different choices out there, uh, but you could do this one for free. Um, so anyways, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Wow. My second favorite word, my first being automation. This is awesome. Uh, yeah. Scott later. I like it. Are you using it's Instagram like, uh, Scott? No, I'm not. I mean, I have an Instagram presence, but I don't really, I don't think I've seen any, anything from it, honestly. But why, I mean, you know, I, I honestly, I, I think for like, I think the millennials are on Instagram. They don't have any money, They're not buying <laughs> but they will well, grow up. Yeah. And they, they will look, grow up. They, so, so yeah. the seeds now. Right. Yeah. Well, but, I think, I think there's some uh, cross platform abilities there in, in terms of what I'm doing anyways, where I can use um, pieces of content that I'm going to put there on, on Facebook or even in my blog or something like that. So, um, you know, uh, the way I look at it at this point, it's, it's not that big of an investment for me to, to add it there as well. So. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, check this out. Here's a, um, here's a cool iPhone app and I think they have it for Android as well. It's called zipped Z I P P E D. And you know, you get this, these P -E -P, P P P E D zipped. And look, you get these, you know, you get these zip files, you know, like multiple pictures on a, you know, I don't know, like, you know, someone sends you a zip file with all these multiple pictures or you get these zip files. And they're like, well, I got to go to my computer and unzip it. Well, this unzips these, these uh, zip files right from your phone so that you can just be more, you know, nimble. You can just do stuff from your phone, more stuff from your phone. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All right. So if I send you a zip file, you know how to open it. All right. I'm buying it right now. 99 cents. Huh. All right. Uh, done and done. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Um, well, my tip of the week is learn more about Eric at landopia.com. Landopia.com. Let's see how pretty this website is since he's a graphic designer. Oh no. Let's see. You you know I've got to pick on something. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Let's see here. 
Oh, I love it. Get the guy that will turn you into a land investment mogul. I, I love, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. Scott, have you seen this site? Yeah, it's good. Really it's good. really good. Oh, wow. Never mind. Nice yeah, so website. I, I just want to say like, if, if people go look at my website, please don't, don't look at it as something that you need to do. Um, you know, I've had a number of people ask me about that. Um, you know, uh, whether it's just creating a website or building a website like mine, um, it is definitely not the thing to focus on. It's, it's something that, you know, I've done it for a living for a, a long time, um, at least from the graphics standpoint. So it's just kind of a part of me um, and it was important to me, but I didn't let that distract from, you know, me actually building the land business. So I just want to say that I think that's really important. Yeah. And I, I think that, uh, you know, you, you can tell like Eric is going to be an amazing coach, Scott, like even just that tip alone, right? He's, he's really going to help take people to the next level uh, in their businesses. He's done it. He can be your Sherpa and get you up that, that land investing mountain safely, efficiently, and, uh, and much faster than you would on your own. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm thrilled to, uh, to be able to introduce him as, as our, our newest land coach. So, Eric, uh, I, I hope you're as excited as I am. I am. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, the, the couple of calls I've had so far um, have really been a blast for me. And, and I, I think uh, the clients have enjoyed it as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's great. It's great. All right. Well, Scott Todd, are we good? We're great, Mark. Eric Peterson, are we good? We are great. Was I too nice this podcast? I, I feel like, no. like I should have been more obnoxious. Like on the round table. No, nah, I think you're good. I think, yeah. You know, we, we still got the round table where I can just really take all that Team Scott sort of jealousy and rage. And What about uh, your seller too? That seller. Like, come and on, yeah, and the I, seller. Like, you know, he's out hustling he's, me. Yeah, he's Team Eric, man. It, I, I am Team Eric. No, yeah. the, the, the seller is. No, the, yeah, the seller's Team Eric, but I think I'm becoming Team Eric. Like, just... Yeah, see? Just to be like, come on, you know, can we, can we partner on a few of these? Yeah. See, you got, you got to, you, how do you get more, you know, you got, how do you attract flies, man, with honey? Yeah, that's right. It's absolutely. So, um, I just want to remind all the listeners, the only way that, uh, I could even get Eric Peterson on to come on the podcast is if you subscribe, you rate, you review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the Today's po podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it system to start automating your notes. And the first note is free. So might as well start now. Collect your down payments. Um, also start listing your, uh, your, your properties on landmodo.com so you don't even have to worry about creating a website. So Eric, we're good? Yeah. All right. Should we do it? I'll let Eric Let's do it. Let's do it. Or you did, did, no, Scott's got to gotta lead it. All, All right. right. One, right. two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. That was really good. That wasn't bad. All right. Best Thanks, one guys. Yet.